Hi, this is Gia Shaman of Noazic, creator of AirHDL, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of AirHDL so that you can start using it today in your FPGA project. So first, what is AirHDL and how does it make your life as an FPGA developer easier? AirHDL is a web-based AXI4 register generator. That means you can edit register maps graphically right in your browser and then download the generated VHDL or System Verilog register file component that you can integrate into your project. And it doesn't stop there, because in addition to the HDL code, you can also download a generated C header for integration in your software and a very nice register documentation. In AirHDL, all the files you download are generated from a single central register map. And because of that, they are guaranteed to be consistent. In fact, AirHDL maintains a revision number for every register map, and that revision number is incremented every time you change anything in the register map. And the generated files all contain that revision number, so you can easily check that, for instance, your VHDL file was generated from the same register map revision as your C header. AirHDL is a web-based application, so there's nothing to install and there's nothing to license. You just sign up for free at airhdl.com and you can start creating register maps in the browser within minutes. No matter where you are on the planet. It's a completely new experience for an EDA tool and we are proud to have created one of the first web-based EDA tools ever. Now let's start with a demonstration. To create a new register map in AirHDL, I'm clicking the Add Register Map link at the bottom of the register maps list. This brings up the new register map dialog where I can enter the name and the base address for my new register map, plus an optional description which will show up in the documentation. After that, I'm in the register map overview and there's not much to see here for now because I haven't created any registers yet. You can see that the list of registers is empty. So let's create a few registers. To create a new register, I'm clicking the new register link at the bottom of the registers table, which brings up the new register dialog. In AirHDL, registers have a name, an address offset, which is relative to the register map's base address that we have entered previously, an optional description, and an access mode which sets how the register can be accessed from the bus. AirHDL supports the following access modes. We have read-write registers that can be read and written from the bus, then we have read-only registers, write-only registers, which save a little bit of logic compared to read-write registers, and interrupt registers, which are a bit special because they can be set from the user logic and reset from the bus by writing once to them. So I'm creating a register called control at address offset 0 from the register map space address and this is a read-write register and I'm adding a short description for that register. Next I'm going to create a register called status at address offset 4 and this is going to be a read-only register. That means it's getting its value from the user logic and it can only be read from the bus. Now back to the register map overview and you can see that the revision number has already gone up because we have added those registers. AirHDL also has built-in design rule checks that warn you about issues like overlapping registers or fields, invalid identifiers and so on. 
RHDL runs those checks automatically every time you download a generated file, but you can run them manually as well by clicking the Run DRCs button. Now let's have a look at our control register. I'm clicking the register's name, which takes me to the register overview. And here you have the name of the register, its address offset, a description, its access mode, a graphical overview of the fields within that register, and a detailed fields list as well. By default, every time you create a register, RHDL will add a 32-bit field called value to that register, and that's why this register has a 32-bit value field. Of course, you can delete this field if you don't need it, or you can modify it, and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm clicking the Edit button, which brings up the Edit Field dialog, and changing its name to LED, because this is a field that's going to control the state of some onboard LEDs. I'm adding a short description, which will appear in the generated documentation, and I'm changing the bit offset to 8, and setting the width to 4 bits, leaving the reset value as it is. Then I'm clicking Save Field to save the changes to the database. In the overview, you can see that the field has been both resized to a width of 4 bits, and that it now starts at bit offset 8 within the register. By the way, all fields within a register inherit access mode of that register. So if you have a read-write register, then all the fields within that register will be read-write fields. Of course, if you'd like to change the access mode of a register, you can do it easily in the overview. Just click Edit Register and change the access mode to anything you like. For example, let's change the access mode of that register to Write Only. Click Save Register and as you can see in the overview, the access mode has changed. It's that easy. Now back to the register map overview and let's edit the status register. I'm clicking on its name to go to the status register overview. Then I'm clicking the edit button of the value field and I'm changing its name to button because this field will be used to read the state of push buttons on the FPGA board. I'm adding a short description and I'm leaving it a bit of set 0 and resizing it to a width of 4 bits. Now back to the register map, I can run the design rule checks again to make sure that there are no errors. Then I can go ahead and start downloading generated files using the download menu. So this is what AirHDL currently offers for download. We have a C header which contains all the register and field definitions, a system Verilog package and a system Verilog module which can be synthesized, a VHDL package, a VHDL component which can be synthesized as well, a VHDL instantiation template which shows how to instantiate the VHDL component in your project, a VHDL test bench, which can be simulated, and it checks that all the registers are working as expected, a register documentation in HTML format, and then we have two export files, which contain all the register definitions in XML and JSON formats. So you could use those files to import your register definitions into another tool or script. Let me just show you the generated documentation for our register map, because it looks really nice. Here it is. It's an HTML document, so you can view it in any web browser. And of course, you can use it as it is, or you could copy and paste the contents into a Microsoft Word document. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is how easy it is to integrate an AirHDL register file into a Xilinx Vivado project. 
So for that I'm downloading the VHDL package and the VHDL component and I'm adding them to my Vivado project that contains a simple Zinc system. Then I'm going to the block diagram editor and using the add module function to instantiate the register file into the block diagram. And notice that Vivado has automatically detected the AXI4 interface and I can now use the wizards to connect the register file to the AXI4 infrastructure in my design. After that, I can set the base address of the register component in the address editor. And then the only thing left to do is connect the register component's user ports to either the user logic or some top-level ports. Since I don't have any user logic here, I'm just going to connect them to external ports like this. So that's it. That was the 10-minute introduction to AirHDL. I hope you liked it and see you around at airhdl.com.